Thank you for inviting us into your homes. This is really wonderful to be with all of you for this beautiful celebration. It's been five years uh -huh. since we had the privilege of having people look inside Date with Destiny. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible experience. And so we decided it would be beautiful to kind of give you an update and give you an exposure and just kind of celebrate the date half a decade later. The event was actually December of 2014. But, you know, it takes a year to put things together and then it has to be sold to a studio. Netflix bought it, won some nice awards. It was just really a beautiful period. But we thought it would be nice to have you meet the man who created yes. it, give you some behind the scenes on that, <laughs> and then maybe give you an update on some of these people five years after the film, but seven years later. And let's get started. I'd like to first start, well, before I start, I'm yes. doing all the talking. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> I'm used to doing all things myself. My beautiful bride, my Sage Robbins, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Blessings to you. And it's just, we've never done a format like this, and it's uh, this particular event and, and actual, when we filmed I'm Not Your Guru, was just so dear to us, and we had the privilege to uh, partner with Joe Berlinger. Joe, we're looking, for you to, looking forward to you joining us today. And it's just a real treat. This is like a fireside chat. We've never had this setting. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for your willingness. Thank you for your heart and love. Uh, I can't remember how many countries, 158? 158 countries. 158. We're yeah. really deeply touched. So thank you. We look forward to just serving you. You know, we really didn't want to, I didn't want to make this documentary before I introduced this gentleman, who's just an extraordinary human being. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my wife yes, didn't really did want not. to make it either because <laughs> it's such a private environment, you know, yeah. Date With Destiny. We, we're used to doing big stadiums of people. And then, you know, Date With Destiny, we keep to just 5,000 people, which may not sound big to you, but compared to 15,000, it's quite intimate. And the idea that we're going to bring cameras in there was like, eh, I don't know about this. And Sage was yes. not really for it either. <laughs> in fact, I remember this man, Joe Berlinger, you're about to meet. You know, I invited him to come to a seminar originally. I met him. I just felt struck by what an incredible human being he is. I had seen one of his documentaries, which was the one on Metallica. And believe it or not, it gave you insight. It was like a psychological film. And it was all just real and real time. It was just gorgeous. It was raw. It was real. You got to see these men as human beings. You got to see their upsides, their downsides. And I was just touched by it. So when I met him in person, I mean, this is a guy that has made films that has saved people's lives. Uh, he made a, a series of films, documentaries, about people that were locked up in jail for murder and they were innocent. And he actually, after more than a decade, got them out. And I thought, a man of this caliber, and when I met him, I'll be honest, I didn't feel like he was as happy as I wanted him to be for his life, because he's such a good soul. So he made this connection, and I invited him to date with Destiny as my guest. And um, he hesitated a little bit, but I'll let him tell you the story. But I'm grateful for him, because if it wasn't him, um, my wife never would agree to it, never. nor I. It still <laughs> took two years of him chasing us afterwards, but I'll let him share with you. The man I'm about to share with you, he is the producer of this film. He's a director, writer, he's an award-winning filmmaker. He has Academy Award nominee. He's three-time Emmy Award winner. He's had eight nominations. He's got a Peabody winner. He's got three Critics' Choice Award winning times. He's got three times Director of the Guild Award winners. He's eight films that premiered at the Sundance. And as I said, he's, he's saved lives. He's a beautiful soul. Please welcome Joe Berlinger, please. Well, great to see you guys. I wish we were in person together. Me too. Uh, but it's, it's really such an honor. Boy, I wish all my films had this kind of uh, resonance and, and celebration and love from its <laughs> subjects five years later. This is great. <laughs> you know? well, well, we've both certainly heard some great things over the years from people that have watched the film. Uh, tell us, tell the story to everybody about how this came about, because most people yeah, have you, no clue. You're kind of hinting at it. You know, we met socially, um, and I think you... Uh, you know, you kind of saw something, you know, that I wasn't happy. You were hinting at it. And um, uh, you invited me to come. I, I didn't even know you did these, these events. So yeah. you invited me to come, you invited me to, come to, this, to this event, which at the time was in Palm Springs, California. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a workaholic. I never take a vacation. As you know, I'm a bit of a workaholic. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, uh, I, I, I don't take vacations. At the time, I considered myself this tough New York skeptical journalist I, I still am um <laughs> and, and uh you know the idea of self-help which is at, what, at the time what i thought i know you don't like that that word but at the time to me i just lumped it into self-help and you know seminar and and i'm i'm a very per you know private person share the whole idea of sharing my feelings with other people I, like to me it was like why you know i don't know what why i'm accepting this invitation, but you were so kind to offer it to me that I just went. And while I'm 
getting on the airplane at JFK and flying to LA and renting my car and driving into the desert. I, I'm thinking to myself, why am I going to this thing? Um, and then I get there and uh, I'm given the VIP treatment, which I wasn't expecting. So uh, Sarah Fosmo with her clipboard sat me in a very front row seat and I'm very visible and I'm thinking, oh, I guess I, I really have to do this. And uh, <laughs> And then the first two hours happen, and honestly, I was like, this is not for me. The dancing, the sharing of feelings, I was like, I was like, oh, my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and, at the, and you hadn't even hit the stage yet. And so <laughs> at the first break, I ran to the exit, called my wife, Lauren, who's, by the way, in the audience and sends her love. Oh, you know? Hi, Lauren. Nice to see you. I hear you. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> um, and so I called my wife and I said, oh, my God, I don't know if I can I can spend another 20 minutes during this, let alone uh, six days. What do I do? And my wife said, "Give you know, you took the time out. Give it a chance. And then quickly, I all of a sudden I realized because we we went through that one exercise you do, which you see in the film where you take your back, take you back to your earliest childhood memory. Yeah. And, and, and that, I won't explain the whole thing, but basically, you know, by, by remembering something that's been repressed about that memory, it's a, it's a key to healing. And in, in front of 2,500 people, I, I closed my eyes and I decided to participate. And when I opened my eyes, I was flooded in tears. And I'm a guy who hasn't cried at, at that point in a really long time. And it just, I, I just felt lighter in the moment. And I thought, oh my God, if this could make me feel this way, even for a minute, I should give it its due. And I realized at that moment that I was being, very, because of my insecurity at the time, I was being very judgmental about the, the event and putting up a wall. Mm. And at that moment I said, you know what, I am going to play full out, a, a term I learned that, that day. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I ended up having the most incredible life transformational experience and I wasn't there to sell you a film. You were, we met socially. You were, you were kind enough to invite me. And by the end of it, I was so blown away and had such a transformational experience because I was not to bore people to death, but I was going through a very difficult time at that moment. And you, you keyed in on that and, ma and gave me this invitation. And, and that's why, that's what pulled me to go. You know, I, 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 I I did, it's not something I would normally do, but it, it literally, and, and I'm so glad I did because it literally transformed my life as a human being. And then watching the event, I just felt it was highly cinematic. And because it had such a deep impact on me when I wasn't planning on, you know, entering this kind of a thing. And because it was so cinematic, I, as, as you hinted I chased you guys for two years because I just thought it would be an amazing film and I decided and what I pitched you was the approach of you know not uh, you know not really dissecting it just dropping you into the event and treating it like a rock and roll film in the sense of just giving you an experience I called it a concert of human emotion yeah and and so I chased you for two years because I I really felt that the event captured on film would help other people. And I was, I also thought that the, um, the, uh, uh, interventions that you do were so not only incredibly impactful, but just very cinematic. So I just believed in my soul that I, I have to make a film about this. You know, some people may think that like you hired me to make a film or this is a completely independent film that I, chased you until you would say yes. And, and luckily you did. I don't know if you remember, there, there were two stumbling blocks for you. The reason you kept saying no is that you didn't want the cameras to interfere with the experience yeah. of yeah. the viewer. Yeah. And you, you were also very concerned that, um, you know, how do you take a 72-hour content-rich event, boil it down to two hours without trivializing it? Yeah. And so... I worked on you for two years. I sent you some of my other films, and I said, "Look, you're trusting the filmmaker to take any, you know, Paradise Lost, the films about those innocent guys. You know, the murder trials were were six weeks long, but you're only seeing about an hour of the murder trial in the film. Yeah. So, like anything, you're trusting a filmmaker to condense time but give you the emotional truth of the situation. Yeah. So you got over that hump, 
but you were still concerned about, you know, the Dropping cameras. The people, yeah, yeah. So I made a deal with you. I said, look, the moment you think the cameras are in the way, just throw me out and we're done. And, and you know, and you said you're willing to take that risk. I said, yes, I'm going to come with my crew. Let me cover it. And the minute you think this is a, you know, a problem, you can shut the production down and, and get rid of me. So I was under that pressure while we were shooting, but <laughs> But, but that's how the whole thing. That, that's how that's how this all happened. And Sage, somehow you you eventually trusted me, but initially I think you were very protective of of Tony. You know, I, was, I definitely was. That was a yeah. gutsy move. I have to thank you so much because so many lives have been touched because of your yeah. courage and commitment and drive and persistence. Uh, but why don't you share what you felt? Because I remember when I was talking to him, finally when you said that, I was like, okay, if it's not, if we, I know for sure the people in the seminar are not going to be disrupted because they didn't come first, and you're willing to take that kind of risk. Uh, I'm willing to do it, but Sage still wasn't ready for it. Well, I wasn't quite ready for a film crew in our home because our life is really full and predate with destiny. My mommy and daddy normally come down. And so uh, I think, Joe, you said that there would be two film crew at our house on day one. And that morning there was like maybe 10 or 11 people. <laughs> uh, but what I didn't expect was that we had all fallen in love, Joe. And you have such a, a beautiful heart and a brilliant mind. And it was such a privilege because Date With Destiny is just such a impactful and transformative program. And to have, I believe it's what this man was born on this earth to do. And to have a glimpse in, and I love what you said, to capture the truth of the experience, you know, the emotional tone and the transformation of these people. You, uh, you portrayed such a beautiful narrative of these individuals' lives and their transformation. Uh, and we became such dear friends. So I'm so grateful. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry for my stubbornness or my fear uh, no, no, it, it. It, it, kept, it, kept, it kept me on my toes but you know it created this tension because you know to do what i have to do i have to push and i have to get access and i have to yes. capture stuff yes. and on the other hand i promise not to interfere with the event but you guys were great and you know everyone just did what they were supposed to do but like one of my one of my favorite moments in the film for example, is after Dawn's transformation, yeah. I wanted to get back to see you, Tony, because you were the you were in tears, and you know your security people and your and your team were protecting you and didn't want me to go back into that room. And I just said, "Look, I got to do it." This that was the one point where I thought, "Okay, maybe I'm going to get thrown out now." But you know, I I just felt I had to I had to get to you, and, and yeah. that's you know, that interview was raw and real and like really my favorite moment uh, in the film. Um, but you know, so it was a little, you know, anyway, somehow it all worked out beautifully and we've become dear friends and, and, and I, I love, you know, I hear all the time from people, uh, you know, I hear all the time from people how, you know, I was going through cancer and watching that film helped me. I was going through a divorce. I watched that film. It helped me. I mean, that's, I mean, just to have, I mean, it's your work, so, you know, but just to have a little participation in the mission that you have and, and what it's done for people has just been really such a special gift in my life. It really has been. I get tears remembering that moment right now. It's one of my special moments in that particular event. And, and Joe, to give you an idea, Joe, like, you know, when people see me on stage, I can't, you know, I've shown my emotion. But when people are hurting, I feel it, but I can't let myself feel it completely because then I couldn't help you. Then I'll be with you, right? I'll be so with you as a person. And so, you know, uh, it always happens to me after one of these breakthroughs, you know, I, I might show some emotion there, but I go backstage and it's just, I have uh, overwhelming emotion and tears because it feels like grace, you know, came through. It happens all the time. It happens every time. And I don't think I'm exaggerating in that in an ounce. And I've been doing it for 33 years, 85 Date With Destinies now. This year will be 86, 34th year doing it, which is just amazing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the universe, God, as, you, as I see it, comes through you when you're really trying to serve and it's not about you. Uh, but I think a lot of people didn't see, don't see that side of me. And Joe <laughs> literally said, Tony Robbins said, this is my film and that I get to do it the way I want to do it. I get full access. That's our deal, right? And so he bursts through the doors and he's filming while I'm sitting there crying. But it was really beautiful because so many people have been touched by that, Joe. So I appreciate your courage and your commitment, your persistence and Grateful you've really helped us touch people in 197 countries around the world, thanks to Netflix. I also want to thank Netflix. Yes. And Joe is now like the king of Netflix. He doesn't talk about it. He's so humble. But he's got all these shows that are just become the – well, your last show, the one you did on Bundy, how many they're people all, watch they're, they're all seri – They're all serial killer shows. <laughs> that was the other – I mean, if people really know my resume, I usually 
deal with some dark subject matter, wrongful conviction, yeah. uh, polluting corporations. I mean, that this film has been the other reason this film has been so special is like I'm I'm always so mired in the dark. It's just so beautiful to have made a film that shines a light on something so positive and and, and, and transformational. Um, but yeah, no, I've been doing, you know, true crime is very popular these days. So I've been doing a lot of true crime stuff, which I'm proud of. So Netflix is, you know, an incredible, it's transformed the documentary business because it's made it, you know, global and they treat documentary as, as, as um, you know, with, with the same respect as scripted content. Um, I also did a scripted movie about Ted Bundy for Netflix on, uh, you know, called Extremely Wicked. Yeah, uh, with Zac Efron and Lily Collins. Yeah. When, you, when you look at most of my resume, people say, "Oh, you did the Tony Robbins film too." That's odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, your your team was your team was pretty skeptical when we started. Like your camera crew, it was really interesting yeah. to watch them. For me, what did you see over the couple of days? The first few days, they were very skeptical, and then you they started were, to feel the shift. What did you see? Yeah, you know, like my longtime cameraman Bob Richman. If you know, if if, if I considered myself a skeptic. A skeptical New Yorker, Bob Richmond, is like, you know, makes me look like Mr. Positivity. Um, <laughs> and so, he, so, so he and the crew were like, oh, you know, Joe, you sure about this? You know, oh, Joe. And by the end of it, they were, I mean, actually, there are some dailies in our footage where you see the camera drifting down because our cam- we, had, we had four camera people. They're all so entranced that they're like leaning in to watch what you're doing during an intervention. And they had a quickly realized, oh, no, I'm shooting. <laughs> but by the end of it, everyone was in and big That's fans. Awesome. One, you know, every event, there's two or three experiences that stand out for me. They're all beautiful, that, that are so memorable. And those, you, how many of you watched I'm Not Your Guru? I'm just curious, how many took the time to watch it before you got here? Great. Wonderful. Well, then you'll appreciate this update. So there was a young woman there, Joe remembers vividly as Sage does and I do. Uh, her name was Dawn. And she had been tied up in this group um, that really abused children. It was a religious group, and it was a cult. And she stood up, and, you know, we have a night, a date with destiny. There's an evening part I call suicide night, which sounds bizarre. And I, we do a big celebration because in any room of 5,000 people, or even this, back in those days, I think it was about 2,200, 2,500, there's at least a dozen people who are suicidal, sometimes two dozen. And so... I read people's forms. Before people come to Date with Destiny, we have you fill out forms. It's different than anything else. I read them all. It, it takes literally weeks to get through it all. And of course, some people turn in the night before, so I'm up all night usually <laughs> reading those too. And it's about 15 pages of questions. And like some people are like, if I knew the answer to these questions, I wouldn't need Date with Destiny, you know? But I read them so I have a, a deep understanding. I won't remember everybody's name. I won't remember everything, but the patterns are in me. So when people stand up, I know what many people have done, and I try to use every intervention to hit as many people as possible. Uh, this is one I was not prepared for, and that was this woman, Dawn. And Dawn, let me give you an update on Dawn. My name is Dawn Watson. I attended Date with Destiny in 2014. You might know me from the documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. Uh, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. Since, you know, everything that happened at Date with Destiny and coming back home and really working, doing the internal work that's needed, um, I created my method based on everything that I lived, everything that I went through, and everything that also I learned with Tony, and blending those two in, in a way of helping people understand that the only way to go through pain is to navigate through it, just go right through it and face it head on and really um, permit pain to show you, to teach you, to transform you. I want to help people that have gone out to that in their pain. Oh, my life changed so much in so many ways and I'm so proud of myself because it is a, it was so much work and it is so much work, but today I see life with completely different eyes. I love, I have an incredible person in my life uh, where I get to share a beautiful relationship and just being in that vulnerable, honest and beautiful place with someone is so amazing. Being able to do the work that I do, I wake up every morning so happy to go and do my events and go and do my retreats where I, where I help people and also, you know, lecture, do podcasts, share with the world my voice like that really, there is nothing that makes me happy happier to live a life where I finally feel that I can be me, that I'm not hiding, that I'm not trying to um, 
uh, cover up something because someone is going to find out or uh, I don't feel like I'm living a life trying to hide or, or if you could think it visually like just naked, just raw, just real, just open and there isn't a better way to live life than just in that raw and open way so everything becomes um, just a beautiful experience. There are days that it's not easy, there are moments where I have to navigate through some really difficult frustrations and pain, but you know, pain is not something that is not in my life anymore. But today I learned how to navigate through that pain. I learned how to learn from that pain. And it really comes from a place of, wow, this is my cocoon. This is a moment of transformation. So let me just be okay. Let me embrace it. Let me be here because I know it's going to pass and I'm going to be better after it. You know. Let's give it up for Dawn. She's joining us live. Give it up for Dawn. Dawn, nice to see you. I got to see you. It was a surprise. I was down in Brazil doing a talk of about 5,000 people, I think it was, and I'm walking through the aisles, and I look up, and I see this face, and I didn't even recognize you at first. Look how transformed you are. Tell us, listen, yes. it's been seven years almost this December, so five years for the film, but seven years since that date. Tell us a little bit about your life. Give us an update. Oh my gosh, Tony, just watching this and being here in this moment. And I feel like since that day when I, I remember that moment and I remember the moment when I got back home and I had to really understand that work, internal work was going to have to happen in my life for me to truly do what, what, what I wanted to do, which was help other people and, and use that pain to help other people. And I feel like from since that day and I'm here like crying because it truly is so powerful that when you navigate through your pain, when you permit pain to truly transform you, how you connect with people, how you're able to feel people, how people from all over the world have connected with me with their stories. And that I, you know, through my own story and through my own journey, being able to support them and help them. And I will never forget the day that you said, Don, you're not gonna be another me. You're gonna be you, and yes. that's more powerful. Yes. Because you, you use your story, use your power. Don't be a copy of me, be you. And being able to come back to me and use my power, and through my story, be able to help other people, it's just been incredible. I really wanna honor you because I offered you that day to learn from Robin's Madonnas, to go through the program we do for therapists, so you'd have all the skills I have. And you did it, you completed it, and you're now you're doing seminars, you wrote a book, right? Yes, I wrote a book, My Journey Back Home. Um, I'm doing online retreats and creating uh, safe environments for people to truly come and work through their pain and work through their abuse in childhood because there's so much pain in our childhood. And if we don't learn to use that pain to empower us, it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy us. And so it has just been incredible to be able to be doing what you did today and be able to know that that is what healing is. Healing is going through your process and then healing is passing it forward. That is part of the project of healing. You know, for me, helping people is part of my healing process. And I know for you too, that is, you know, giving you yes. receive back, healing you heal. So I just, I'm so grateful. You look younger now than seven years ago, doesn't you, Joe? I mean, you look incredible. Like you could just feel the radiance coming through you. Joe, do you have a question for Dawn? Just out of curiosity? Uh, we haven't, you know, we haven't talked since the movie. Uh, and I see how great you're doing. Like, what did you have ups and downs, or was it like a, a straight line, or how, you know, how how did you get to this place? You know. Yes. No way. There is definitely ups and downs. I, I went through a really emotional process coming back from Date with Destiny. I think something that's really interesting is sometimes when we leave a Tony Robbins event, we're like, Tony's gonna come in this white horse and just save us. And that Tony, that's not Tony's, um, you know, purpose. And so, you know, he creates the safe environment with the work, the healing you got to do in your day to day. And so when I finally understood that, I understood that healing is up and down. It is going through the ugliest parts of you so that you can find out the prettiest, beautiful parts of you. And so I feel like that process until today, it is, it's been so incredible. And then being able to um, be with so many different people that were at Day with Destiny, even my uncle, he's here and- Oh, he's he here? One of my events. Joaquin yes. is here? Joaquin is here. Hi, Joey. Yeah. The great uncle. If, if you didn't see the film, just so you have context, there was a moment where, you know, really Dawn couldn't even imagine uh, anybody loving her or trusting a man of any sort. 
And I said, look around this room, and it's all this beautiful people, men and women, just sending love into her. It was gorgeous. And I said, I want you to pick, you know, three men who could be your great uncles that could be a source of support. And I interviewed all three of them. They all got chosen for different reasons by her. But Joaquin, you stood out, and I said, are you willing to commit to the next being there for her over the next five, ten years? Not every day, but be there. Seven years later, and here you are. Let's give a hand for Joaquin for that commitment alone. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, they didn't know each other. They never even met. He stepped up for it. Joaquin, what have, what have you seen in her over the last seven years? What can you share? Well, she's had her ups and downs. You can get a call three o'clock in the morning, yes. and she's sort of going through one thing or the other. And then I see her so, she has such strength, such power. And um, we kept talking to each other. We kept in touch. And someday she called me and said, look, Joaquin, I'm doing this seminar in, in Brazil. You know, I, I, I have the strength. I need to heal people. And I see you doing such terrific things. I mean, you make people walk on, uh, on broken glasses and you make them break their arrows with their, with their throat. Yeah. Uh, is, is that real? I said, please don't do this in your home. Please don't <laughs> do this. But I flew over to Brazil and she did the healing part and I did the high impact part. Wow. A way to make people release their feelings and their emotions because I'm a business coach. So for me, it was quite hard to deal with Dawn. You know, she's quick minded. She's always thinking about things. And um, well, there we were. And it was fantastic. So right now I'm from Ecuador. I'm in Spain. I'm finishing writing a book. And I promised Dawn when I go back to Ecuador, I will fly again to Brazil because it's so wonderful not only to see you, but to see how you deal with people who are going through difficult times. I had my share of that. And thanks to you, Tony and Sage, I've managed to uh, overcome a lot of fears and difficult moments. And she has inspired me. It's beautiful to see you. And um, I'm part of the family. See, I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Joaquin. Thank you. I love you. And one thing, remember, <laughs> life isn't how you paint it. It's the way you color it. And yes. she's done a terrific painting and love. Thank you so much. I want to thank totally. you. I want to thank you. You're, you're a stranger to her. And for seven years, you've been a resource for her. That just says so much about you. But I'm also just so grateful you've continued to change your own life as well. Give Joaquin a big hand. Thank you, Joaquin. Don, one last question. You know, at the time, you couldn't imagine being with a male or trusting a male. And I said, well, I'm one, right? But in an intimate relationship. But I've heard that you've taken that part of your life to a new level, too. Tell us what you're, what's happening yes. in terms of relationship. <laughs> yes, and it's, it's so beautiful because I truly, I see that every time that you are, have the courage enough to navigate through uh, some difficult pain, especially in your sexuality, so especially have women that have gone through abuse, um, being able to open themselves up to men again and, and open themselves to them so that they can feel love and experience love. And my life truly has been so incredible after I decided that I was going to open up. And yes, it's going to be scary. And yes, I'm going to have to encounter a lot of things that are going to um, either scare me or want me, I'm going to want to close up again. But the moment I said, yes, I'm in, I want to live this. I want to enjoy this and just trust. Life has just been so beautiful and be able to share my life with someone else and be able to be open to love and be able to completely heal that area of my life and now be able to help other women heal their sexuality, heal the pain um, and really transform it into something so beautiful and free. I, I consider myself today completely free. We feel in, that. In every area of my life. I completely feel that and I'm able to share that now so um it really comes from having the courage to just say i'm going to open up and it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be magic because healing isn't magic but it's natural to our soul our soul wants to heal so you've just opened to it it will happen give it up for dawn everybody love to you dawn it's beautiful beautiful joe berlinger everybody I just want to say one thing, you know, I, at this point in my life, I've made probably 18 feature films about Metallica, Paul Simon, Wrongful Conviction, whatever, hundreds of hours of television. Truly the most impactful experience I've ever had was making I Am Not Your Guru because it touched, it touched me personally and, and really transformed my life. So I thank you for that opportunity and the chance to 
in my own small way, help amplify the incredible work that you and Sage do has, you know, has truly been the honor of my life. So let's do a sequel. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Love you, Joe. Thank you so much. We love you so much. Give it up for Joe Berlinger, the one and only. You know, the great experiences that comes out of Date with Destiny. And and by the way, I hope you come. You know, we'd love to have you be there. It's one thing to watch for two hours, nothing to experience for six days and nights. And there's nothing like it. We only do it once a year. And the beautiful part now is you don't even have to come in person. And believe it or not, some people say, well, that really worked. We did it this last year. It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, better than I thought it could work. Because also some people are more comfortable in their home. They're not surrounded by everybody. They feel a little bit more relaxed and so forth. But the greatest gift for me is not just saying people change. It's seeing people go home and keep that change and make that change benefit their family and their friends and their businesses and their clients and their customers. And so my whole thing is, you know, each one teach one. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm here to help everyone I can, you know, try to take 44 years of my life experience. That's how I've been doing this. I started when I was three, of course. Right? <laughs> um, and compress that into a few days, like compress decades into days and save you as much pain as possible and help you achieve more, but also to be more fulfilled. Yes. Because people think that when everything goes a certain way, someday, someone, something, I'll accomplish something and then I'll be happy. And it's BS. It doesn't work that way. Unless you can find joy in whatever moment you're dealing with, including your challenging times, you're not going to have a sustainable quality of life. Certainly not extraordinary quality of life. It'll be a life, but it won't be the one that you desire and deserve. And so that's what our focus is here. And, and to see Dawn, you know, she, if you didn't see the film, she grew up in this cult, you know, the children of God, and they, they were taught that children were supposed to have sex with the adults. I mean, if you could imagine being put through that kind of experience or one of her family members, you know, left this planet early as a result of trying to deal with that pain to give you an idea. And to see her today, if you saw the film, and you see her now, seven years later, because that's one thing people go, well, does this really last? The answer is, you bet it does. And the reason it lasts is because you're making a change inside of you. You're shifting your perceptual tools, your beliefs and your values and your rules. And that changes everything. It's quite beautiful. Yes, and I think what else is so beautiful, Joaquin and Don are a reflection of the community and the friendship that yes, they really that's built. True. I mean, besides your own inner transformation, it's just finding like-minded individuals, the love that Don and that Joaquin shared and her other, like that team, there's just a collaboration and a rallying hood and, and, a, and a rallying of like true brotherhood and sisterhood. It is such a unique collective consciousness and family that's birthed through this process. It's really beautiful. Uh, Don, congratulations, Joaquin. It's wonderful to see you. God bless you guys. That, that, that sense of, yes, give it up for him again one more time, please. That community of friends from all over the earth is another thing that no one expects that comes, comes out of being here in this environment together. Because when you go through these kinds of intense experiences, it's just like it bonds us forever. Well, if you watched the film, at least recently, hopefully you watched it again, got to reconnect to it. Another great moment in that film were Tammy and Lance. And they were this couple where she got up and she gave her beautiful vision for the relationship, which was quite poetic and very diverse and very long. (laughs) And then the camera turned to Lance, who was like, you deer in the headlights. Like, how do I top that? Lance, I'm with you, brother. I don't know how you could have topped it. I think we have a quick little video to summarize you guys, and we'll bring you back on. I was stoked for, you know, what she had written, because mine wasn't there. And I put my notebook down and I was trying to find her to like embrace her and then boom, there was like, it all happened. It was everything. It was just the power of the the whole experience because you had all these people around. I'm getting called out on my shit and I don't even know what's going on, you know, at that moment, just like, whoa, and then he's in your face. And so it's, the whole experience was like off the Richter scale. And definitely after that night, like connected on a different level and, and have been ever since. Well, I don't know if you remember from the um, documentary, but it was in, it was at the Tony Robbins event that I was like, I'm ready. And like, I'd been like, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And then at the event, I was like, I'm ready. <laughs> I have always been worried about bringing children into our relationship. And after last night, uh, I pretty, feel pretty damn certain I'm ready for that. It's awesome, ladies and gentlemen, it's awesome. And then 
and then I, we got pregnant right after that. <laughs> so we have a um, five-year-old son named Keenan, and he's the one that um, I claimed at, at the date with Destiny, and I said, I want you to come in. And then we have a three-year-old daughter named Ariella. It's a constant battle, you know, to keep uh, on that on that line and, and, and the passion, and then with the kids and, and everything else, and building the house we've been working on forever, and it's just, there's so much happening, the chaos is everywhere, and to try and keep our connection together, um, it's taken massive work. No matter how crazy life is, no matter what is going on, like keeping our connection is just so important. We recently, just a few months ago, moved into these new offices. We're like in the heart of the island that we live on and it's just so magical and so beautiful. Really feeling his vision was what I feel like really came to me at Date With Destiny and now I'm seeing it manifested in our life, in our home, in our work environment and just how we're creating our life and it's just really beautiful. Give it up for Lance and Tammy joining us live, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for them. Guys, I love seeing you got two children. I mean, that was one of the things you were struggling with at the time. Not just your relationship, but whether you were ready, where you're going to go for it. Cong first of all, congratulations. Yeah. What's it like being parents? <laughs> it's amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> I watch them go to sleep every night, and I'm just like, I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. Aww. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't happen unless you'd done the work you guys did on your relationship and, and you know, uh, the, the difference that you created within yourself, Lance, in that moment when you roared, and those, <laughs> anybody seen the film, and, you know, it's, I was telling him a metaphor, you know, using some basic fundamental hypnotic patterns, because all a hypnotic pattern is, is you're no longer out there, you're inside yourself, and so you can rewire things. And while I'm telling the story, there's this moment where you remembered who he was, <laughs> I was telling the story, what was that like for you internally? What, was, what did that moment mean to you? What did you feel? It was, a, it was a huge release. It just, I can't even explain it. I think um, there's just so much packed inside and it just felt like my, I cracked my shell, exploded. And, and ever since then, just been, you know, working more on myself, you know, every, every moment. So. Yes. Well, it's certainly changed. What, what happened to you in that moment with your man when he came back over and you could feel that presence? I mean, that's when I, that's when I said I want to have children with this man. I just could feel him, and I knew that no matter what came at us, we would be okay, and that he was there. Like, I could, I just, I could feel him. He was there, you know, mm -hmm. and we have, like, we've been through, you know, two Category 5 hurricanes. We've been displaced. We lost where we were living. We had a baby in the middle of that. We lost shut down our practice because we couldn't keep functioning and we've been through a lot and you know and I think that that moment that that happened and the rest of the event is when I was like I can do whatever with this man and we have done been through a lot since then and and I felt him through it you know so, he's so been present. just two hurricanes and COVID that's all you've been through <laughs> rebuilding your home having two children when you said chaos I think we have a better understanding of that chaos. two children alone could create chaos but all that but isn't that the best testimony to both of your growth yeah. that all hell is broken loose and you come closer and closer, and the things you're worried about being able to manage with kids as small compared to the external world, because you guys change your internal world. I'm just, I really honor you. Give them a hand for that right away, just to start with here. It's just amazing. I love seeing the emotion in both of you, especially you, Lance. Look at the emotion in this man. It's just gorgeous seeing you. Seven, it's, it's seven years since that. It was five years since the film, but seven years since that time this December, so just a couple months off. Yeah. It's beautiful as well, you know, you guys are such a reflection of the human experience and just hearing all the 
painful times in your life, all the times of chaos, all the shifts of your practice and everything, and just seeing you guys live this, seeing you put these truths to work, seeing you using these tools. You guys look younger. You look more beautiful. Your yep. children are so gorgeous. I mean, it's so it's so freaking gorgeous through you, on you, as you. You can feel your isness together. Really, hats off to you both. You guys are gorgeous. It's really, it's a privilege. Thank you for joining us today. And it's just Thank beautiful. You. It's beautiful to see that you guys took that week, uh, that moment, that intervention, and living that reality for your lives. And it's just, it's, it's really, it's gorgeous to witness. What advice would you give those listening, those watching around the world? There's people here from 158 countries right now, or 100,000 plus people that might be struggling with issues with COVID, their practice being shut down, or a hurricane, or children. I mean. Tell us, tell us from your own words, what, what would be your best advice for them to really ensure that no matter what happens in the outside world, they can really continue to grow deeper together? Uh, I'll start. Oh, I like Keeping that. That's, the... that's a different pattern as well. Look at that. If you guys watched the <laughs> film, it was the direct opposite pattern. She was running the show on everything. Okay, I'll start. All right, I like that. <laughs> um, working hard to keep the love alive and the spark. Yes. And um, just trusting, trusting the process and um, trusting your partner. Yeah. yeah, especially in the middle of tough times, right? Yeah. What do you think, Tammy? What would be your advice? I am such a believer in what you, I hear you say all the time and just heard you say again, which is life happens um, for you, not yes. to you. Yes. And everything that I feel like has come our way, I'm like, all right, like I li like, like we listen, you know, and we're like, well, what is this? Like, okay, we can't, you know, we're being displaced, we're moving, we're having a child in the middle of it. Like we're closing our practice. We've actually reopened. And it's like more uh, that I've ever wanted in practice of, of how we've been forced to recreate. And it's like, everything does happen for us, you know? Yes. And yes. Just like staying in that energetic, staying in the knowingness of, of divinity and of being led and trusting yeah. and allowing life to unfold and not spending time saying, you know, why is this happening? Or it could be different, but just really honoring whatever it is that's coming our way and trusting that it's for us. That's beautiful. Give them a big hand. Love you guys. Congratulations on your children. Congratulations on your love. Love to you. Well, listen, I really just want to thank you for spending this time with us. I hope that watching this film and I hope that just spending a little time together today reminds you that we can all create a compelling future. Yeah. You know, I ask people all the time, you know, what do you think would be the best thing that could ever happen to you? And the number one answer I hear around the world, and there have been studies that do this as well, that's where I got it from, is people say to win the lottery. And then I say, what's the worst thing that could ever happen to you? And you get all kinds of answers, but the number one answer is become a paraplegic. And so... There have been studies on this, studies to see three years after the event of either winning the lottery or being in a position where you lost the use of your limbs, who do you think is happier three years later, if drugs are not involved? If drugs are involved, it's off. But if the person doesn't do drugs, who do you think is happier at the end of three years? Someone who became a lottery winner, I mean hundreds of millions of dollars, or the person who is now a quadriplegic or paraplegic? If you wrote down the person who won the lottery, you're wrong. You know why? Because after three years, studies show they're both just as happy as they were before. If they're unhappy, they're still unhappy. If they're happy, they're happy. The person who won the lottery gets upset because everybody wants something from them and it's no longer about their relationships. There's all kinds of studies showing that. And the person who's a paraplegic, if they can move a finger, all of a sudden there's this incredible appreciation for the littlest things in life. So thinking that, when the world's no longer COVID or when things go back, everything will be okay, that's BS. If you really want things to be great, you gotta master what's happening inside. That's what this event called Date with Destiny is about. It's six days, it's once a year, it's coming up in December and we'd love to serve you if it makes sense. But if not, I hope today's inspired you. We just wanted to thank you for your willingness and just your gorgeous spirits. You are all so lovely and for the generosity of the people who shared today, our prayers that you were reminded and that you were called and uh, that through their sharing and through this entire afternoon that you've touched upon something more deeply inside yourselves or remembered a truth inside yourself that you feel more freedom, more openness and that your soul obviously called you here uh, to join this. It's just that hunger is what guides us 
is and it's all led us to this moment. And uh, we pray to see you at Date With Destiny. If that doesn't serve you, I know that our paths will cross and, and thank you for your courageous hearts. We love you. God bless. Hope to see you in December. Love to you all.